All right, Black Tree TV, I'm here with a special guest. My friend, uh, y'all know y'all be saying this about actors. I know I be saying Will Smith, my friend, and he really, you know, I know him. But this <laughs> is my, my friend, Mr. Jamie Nieto. And um, I mean, I got some stories to tell. I mean, first, Jamie is starring on this year's uh, and last season's uh, uh, Raising Canaan um, as as Demo. But I mean, Demo, I got, Demo, Demo. And I got so many stories to tell. I mean, I, I, the one story that will forever, like, I don't think there's a, a time when somebody really interviews somebody that posterized them. And you posterized <laughs> me in front of my kids. I don't know if you remember this day. We went to some, some gym in Glendale. And, you know, uh, like, I used, you know, I used to be able to get up. I used to be able to dunk. I used to run. And, and, we, and we was playing ball. And Jamie stole the ball from me. My, my son is in on the sideline. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm about to run down. I'm about to block this guy's shot. I went up. I ran, ran him down. I jumped. I know he's a high jumper. I was like, I'm about to block his shot. You know, just show my son who I who I used to be. <laughs> Jamie goes up. He looks at me jump and turns around and dunks it on me. It was, it was like, <laughs> I retired playing basketball after that. You don't know, like, you were oh. retirement. Like I stopped oh, no. you know, after that. <laughs> oh no, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> but uh but but more than that, I mean Jamie's uh you know been a, a great actor, a great coach, a great inspir inspirational leader, um uh, a, a super athlete, two-time Olympian. Uh you went to Athens in 04 and London in 2012. And yeah, I, I think you won like two. Olympic trials means here, US, US US trials. So he's a real deal. Right? And uh what was your high? It was 2.04 meters. Two, two what was it? What's your high? Three four, three four, two point three four. Two point three four meters. And for those Which, uh, Americans that never will figure out what that means, how how, how high is that? Seven eight. Seven seven feet to eight inches. Yes. Oh my gosh. He could jump <laughs> over uh Victor Wimbenyama. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> And um and uh you also been uh you know uh you know been acting for a while. I remember you played Roberto Clemente and uh yeah. and uh and and like tragically you had you had an accident after your Olympic career while you was coaching. Days after you was coaching my um it might, it might have been the next day or the day after my you coached my, my son and daughter at South Pasadena that you had a oh. a, an accident and um and 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 has fought his way, uh, you know, back from you know from uh, near total paralysis to being to, to 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 functioning and acting and doing this thing. You're a father now. I mean, there's so many great things to talk about when I'm talking about you, Jamie. But um, but yeah, uh, you. you know, how's the journey? How's the journey been? Because I know a lot of people don't get to do two great things. I mean, you 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 you, you made the highest stage. You're at the Olympics twice. Now you're in uh, the 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 power MCU with Raising Canaan, uh, created by Sasha Penn and Fifty Cent, and uh, yeah. and as Demo and and, and played along to Patina Miller to so, Joey Badass. Joey Badass, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a brand named Billy Badass in Atlanta. I just had a, a mind slip. You know, um, a fashion brand. Um, no yeah. worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how does how does it feel to be able to have you know, you know, go through you know achieving the highest stage in athletics, um, being so positive when you when you um, when you had had the accident, um, you know, doing the flips, and it's still like making back now you're on the screen doing your thing with a with a yeah. very normal character. Like, how does that when you just look back at that? How does that how does, how do you feel about it? Man, I feel extremely blessed. I mean, it's all love. I'm, I'm glad we got a chance to do this tomorrow. This is this is you know awesome for me, and it's always great seeing your face. And I appreciate you keeping in contact over the years. You know that's been amazing as well. But uh, you know, man, God is God is great. I mean, I say God is good. Chicken is good. God is great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, because you know, a lot of people who who have been in my position in the sense of like getting injured and and being paralyzed from the chest down. 
don't usually come back. You know, they usually just accept whatever uh, the doctor is, is telling them. And, and um, you know, in my case, the doctor told me I should probably get about 30% functionality back, which, you know, I told him, well, you know, I, I serve a higher doctor, a higher power, which is God. And God told me I'm going to make 100% recovery. So uh, just keeping that close to my heart and still working hard, you know, uh, you know, faith without works is dead. So I, I, I go out there. I was working out today. You know, I was in my little foyer taking steps with my ankle weights on and, and my crutches and just, you know, putting in the time. I try to, you know, stay, stay positive and focus. And more than anything, I got a beautiful wife, supportive wife behind me that pushes me and continues to edify me and, and lift me up and, you know, help me through this journey that I'm going on, you know. And, and even, you know, encourage me to get back into acting afterwards. And, and you know, I mean, that's been a blessing to be able to, to be a part of, of, of Raising Canaan, you know? Look, everybody getting a little something, something for their patients and accommodations. You took our money, you know our deal. The money ain't nearly enough to cover me waiting on the elevator for 45 minutes every day because that motherfucker always too crowded. All right? Yo, I want to say it again. You need to back the fuck up. You serious? You think I'm scared of you, nigga? I got shot seven times and I'm still putting fools on their back. Be the next nigga. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you and understand. I'm sorry for your troubles, brother. I'll deal with it. Yeah, you will. Yo, everybody get the fuck off the elevator. My man ain't got places to be. Let's go. Come on. I got you. Demo, nigga. Better recognize. <sighs> Openly and aggressive, that's, that's me. The breathing helps with the... Yeah. And, and raising two children, you and your, your wife were... Uh, uh, Siobhan was what, Jamaica or Trinidad? What? Yeah, Jamaica, Jamaica. two-time Olympian for Jamaica in the 400 hurdles, right? Look, you so, so now you have two kids. Are y'all raising some Olympians too? I mean, I know you are raising Canaan, but are you raising Olympians? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're raising kings and champions. That's what we're raising. You know what I mean? And, and I say that uh, in the sense of my son's name is uh, Jaysha King Nieto, and my other son is Jalen Champion Nieto. So we're raising kings and champions, you know? Uh, and, and whatever they want to do, we don't, you know, we're not, we're not like, hey, you got to be an Olympian, you know? We just, we want to support them in, in whatever they want to do. You know, they're three and one years old right now, one year old. So <laughs> we're just having fun with them, watching them run around and, you know, enjoy enjoy playing with them and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tell, tell me about the casting process and, and when you, uh, you know, how you locked in the role of a demo and, and tell me about that. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, at the time, uh, she, my wife's mother was here and I was like, hey, I got this audition for Power. This is going to be amazing because Power is one of my favorite shows. Uh, both of our, one of our favorite shows, both of our favorite shows. Uh, so, you know, to get that opportunity to audition for Raising Canaan. We was like, oh, this this would be amazing. You don't want to never really get your hopes too high because it's like, you never know. So it was just like, that would be awesome if I could get it, but you know, we'll see what happens. And I remember my wife was helping me with the audition, and we asked her mom to leave us a lot of cussing in the audition. So I was like, I don't want to hear me cussing like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she took the baby and went for a walk, and then my wife was like grilling me and it's making me upset. And the scene had, uh moments in there where, where I obviously had to be upset. It was the scene where I was in the, um, in the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, shoot, I'm missing the word. Next to the elevator and I was talking to lunch with Mark, you know, yeah. and, and I'm supposed to be like, yo man, people were pissing in the stairs when I was smoking in the elevator, you know, like, so I already have to have that energy. And yeah. so uh, it just really helped to, to, that I infused that into the uh, audition. And when I turned it in, you know, I, I can't remember if I did a callback or if they did a straight booking because that was like three years ago, you know what I mean? But yeah. Um, but yeah, I got it. And I remember being on set and I was like, I was talking to one of the 
a, a producers or one of their assistants and they were like, yeah, I seen your audition, man, you did great. I was like, really? They said, yeah, you, you seem the most mad out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was kind of mad. <laughs> Yeah, because my wife was like, she was being encouraging me. She was like, you can get this, like, you know, and I was just like, oh, I'm not getting it, and I need to get this, you know? And, and then it was just, you know, blessed to get that call from my agent to say, hey, you booked the role. And uh, they've been, you know, they've been beautiful. Sasha has been great, you know. I, I'm also an aspiring writer, so talk to him about writing and stuff like that. And uh, working with London has been great. He's been nothing but encouraging. And, you know, uh, when I have my little improv or, you know, moments. He's like, yeah, do it, go for it, go for it. And, and even the directors, you know, they, they've been the same way, you know, they've been like, yeah, go for it. Give me everything you got. So I go out there and I just have fun, you know? And, mm -hmm. you know, when you have a good cast and good people to work with you, you know, it just makes the process that much funner and easier, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so how much of a, how, I mean, I mean, cause you know, a lot of people, like you said, don't, don't, uh, get their, you know, as much functionality back after paralysis, um, you know, whatever the, for whatever, you know, the, the reason is, but how, how much of an inspiration have you been for those people that are, are trying, I mean, to see your story, to see that your faith and, and, and your determination has, you know, gotten you this far, like, do you, do you hear from other people that are just, just experiencing their their injury and just getting used to it. I, I remember visiting you in, a, in that hospital, man, and you know, you've come so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah, no, I um, I do hear from people, and and, and you know, it's it's interesting. It's like I remember somebody saying, "It's such an inspiration." I'm like, I don't want to be the inspiration. I don't, I don't want to be here in this position. Right. Um, but God, you know works you know he, he he makes sure that you do what you need to do and it's like i'm just living my life doing my best to get back on my feet you know what i mean and 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 that's it and and people happen to be inspired by that and and i'm glad that i can inspire people and i want to encourage them because i think you know i truly believe uh you know a lot more people could be more functional uh if they just had some motivation or just had some hope that you know, I can do this. I, I really truly believe that. I think there there could be more people out there who are paraplegic or quadriplegic that could be doing more, but have just accepted what the doctors told them. So uh, hopefully I'm an inspiration to them, but uh, I'm, I'm just trying to live my life and do the best I can and raise my kids and give God all the glory. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. 2023 was a rough year for the industry. Like you said, you're, you're a writer, so you're WGA and you're SAG. Um, how, you know, how, how did you approach the, the obstacles that they, that they both were looking for with collective bargaining agreement? Like, how did you feel? Do you, do you mess with AI? Do you feel like, um, as a writer, is it, is it a tool that you use? Um, you know, like how, how did, how did you feel that about first being in there, knowing that you got a season three about to come out and, and knowing that the strike got stuff on pause and now, you right. know that stuff has got resolved. Like, how do you feel about the issues that the two guilds was covering? Uh, you know, I, I support them, you know, um, 100%. You know, uh, I think AI is very interesting. I think it's going to eventually kind of change the way the industry moves, you know, and it, it already is, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I think, I think right now, with the with the two guilds, I think they're doing the best they can do, and I think um, we move forward. It might not be the greatest deal, but we move forward, and I think within a couple of years we can move even forward, far farther forward. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm in support of them. You know, I, I'm here to to you know cheer them on and keep moving forward, and hopefully making the industry better for everybody. You know. Yeah. So what what type of things are are, are you do you got any uh features ready to go? Or, I mean what what have you been what have you been working Oh yeah, you on? know you know that. I, I mean I really just been working on just you know <laughs> you got to be diligent with writing, you know, and, and obviously acting as well, you know. I, I studied for years for acting and I've been writing for years, so I just really want to be great at writing, you know. I really want to be great at writing, so I I'm still working. I have these scripts and I just keep going over them. We've talked about writing before with the scripts that you've written as well. And I just keep kind of going over them and making sure, tweaking. I'm, I'm writing new stuff all the time and just trying to stay in that process. You know, as an athlete, 
you know, I trained every day. I don't, well, I, I almost write every day. I probably do write every day just because I'm always thinking about it. So, and then I, I also write on my phone because my fingers don't work the way they used to. So I'm not tight. I used to be able to type like 60 words a minute. Right? I'm like one finger now, you know, like doing that. But I actually write scripts on my phone now. So I can use my phone and I can thumb, you know, lines of dialogue and stuff like that. So that helps me out a lot. So I am kind of always writing and I write pretty much everywhere. So wherever I go, if I, if I just think of something like, oh, hold on, let me write that down real quick. Okay, cool. And then get back into, you know, the life, you know. But yeah, I got scripts ready to go. It's just, you know, find, finding the right person, the producer to, to, to make that script come to life, you know? Yeah. 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 Once Olympian, always Olympian. We going into uh, Paris this year for this year's Olympic Games. And I mean, we've been seeing like, you know, it, it's, it's not the era of Usain Bolt. Now we have all these, you know, Noah and all these other athletes. I'm not right. sure who's the top in in, in the high jumping or or uh, 400 hurdles. I, mean, well, I do know who 400 hurdles. <laughs> um, but what do you think about the the new era of athletes? I mean, I, I see like all these times getting so amazing. Is it is it equipment? Is it is it training techniques? Is it the <laughs> fact that I know when you know you know I I, I was pretty good, but you you're super great. I know at that time we didn't have the just the video, just to like do frame by frame of what we, you know, just to like be able to break down stuff. It's so, but the technology yeah. that's that's jumped into sports, I think, has elevated it. I mean, do you, do you, I mean, is that is that your feeling as Olympia? Like, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, I I agree. Uh, you know, uh, the, the top guy in the high tip is the guy from Cutter. His name is uh, Mutas. Um, uh, and then the top female 400 hurdler is Sydney McLaughlin. She's the world record holder now. Yeah. So yeah, you know that. But uh, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, I, I still got to put the Leela in there because I know they go back and forth. Sydney definitely is it, but yeah, right, right. My, my girl, I got, I got shot. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, um, but but yeah, obviously I'm a track fan as well, and I and I continue to uh, keep up with the sport. I love the sport, love watching the sport. But you know, I think it's a combination of all those things. You know, you got people that are pushing people to get better and better and better. The facilities are getting better. The shoes are getting better. You know, training is getting better. The way that they approach training is getting better. Um, so I think that all helps. You know, um, push the athlete to get it to to higher heights and, and faster times. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my safe answer. <laughs> <laughs> we got to speak, speak on other other elements of the sport. And okay, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah. Talk. I mean, I mean, I I can a little bit, but you, I mean, you know, it's out there. You know, what I mean, yeah. and, and it's it. I because I've been in the sport, I've seen behind the curtain. You know, and I think that that documentary Icarus really exposed a lot of that, and I still feel some type of way about it because I feel like I got robbed for a lot of my career by the Russians because they were winning a lot of meets. And, you know, when you have a whole uh, country as well as a whole organization kind of going against you, you know, it makes it really hard to win. And, and actually I was just writing something now uh, uh, about a track coach giving some advice to athletes. And that was the, the question they asked in my script was like, yo, how do you beat these guys who are on drugs, you know? And, and, and the answer is basically you have to time, you know, you have to train to peak at certain times. You're not going to beat them most of the time, yeah. but it's those one times that it's those times that, you know, at the championships, Olympics, the world's, you know, those places where it's a little bit tougher for them to be on that stuff that you can try to get, them, you know, so, uh, you know, you got to be very strategic about it. But more than anything, it's not even about them in a sense. It's, it's about them in a sense when you're losing money and stuff like that. But you got to look at yourself at the end of the day, because that's a machine that you might not be able to beat. Like I said, the whole country and a whole organization that was going against me. But looking back did I push myself to the heights that I wanted to get to did I work as hard as I can those are the things that make you a winner you know those are the things that help you to be like okay you know you can see past that and you don't have to look at that side you can just say hey I went out there I did the best I can do God knows who the real winner is and I know I did the best I could do so uh, but it took me time to realize that that's coming from a mature athlete you know a younger guy might not really realize that you know yeah yeah, yeah. 
Hey, so that's that's the real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, time is so. I mean, um, you know, my son has stopped running, um, you know, track. Um, but I know timing, you know, is so important. Just, you know, so many people like in early, you know, excuse me, early on this season, like blow up and then, um, you know, come out to the, 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 the states or the regionals or whatever that's going on. And, and then they, they don't, they're not peaking no more. You know what I'm saying? They, they peak too early to train to like get there to the ultimate goal. Right. Part of that that mental maturity that you have to do to be a champion. So, um, right, right, and it well, takes time to be great, man. You know, you yeah. just keep encouraging them. You know, what other surprises could we tune in? Could we uh, expect from this season? I mean, it's, it's already been so many. I mean, we already seen what what happened with with Unique and uh, what they they call it uh, from Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Ronnie, yeah. Mike Myers, aka yeah, Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie Myers. There's so many, you yeah. know, surprises. Uh, can, can you clue us in any other surprises that that that's gonna happen? I mean, I got the screener, so I know some of the stuff. But you, you, you drop any like, any nuggets on? That's what I was gonna say. I'm like, you already <laughs> seen it. You know what's coming up. <laughs> I've been sending you screenshots. I was like, look, look at you, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. Now you know it's so interesting that uh, everything is super compartmentalized. You know what I mean? Like, I only see my scenes, so I don't know what else is coming up, you know what I mean? So I, because I'm a fan, I, I'm investing, I'm watching. So I know a little bit because I hear it, you know, maybe on set or through the chat or whatever. So, yeah. or, you know, from my from my episode, like I'll go to the table read and I'll, I'll know what happens in that episode. But uh, as for anything like, they like, they like, you know, you unless you're one of the main cast, you know what I mean? Like I'm sure, you know, Marvin and all them because, you know, they get all the scripts because they're in every script. So I'm sure they have all of it, but I just, I just get my scenes. And so I'm like, me, for my character work, I'm like, hmm, okay, now that happened. So what's going to happen after that? How, how did that happen? You know, like, so I'm trying to piece it together too, you know what I mean? Uh, just for my own character work, you know, like that last scene with uh, with me, uh, you know, talking to the feds or whatever, I have that line where I'm like, you know, the only reason why I'm in here is because I owe Howard a favor. And I'm like, I didn't even know I knew Howard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. I don't know the rest of the script like that. So, but it's, it's really interesting and it's really fun, you know, and it, it's great to interact with, you know, some of the fans and some of the blogs and the people out there who are, you know, really tuned in and dialed into the show. Uh, so that's been good. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of my, my, my big answer for, for, for your question. <laughs> and I mean, y'all, y'all had it. Wendell Pierce on the show. It's some, it's some great actors you know, on yeah. on that set, um, you know, uh, I mean, what I I know you, like you said, you've been training for years as as a, as an athlete and as an actor. But when you, you see like a a window or a, a London Brown or a, a Patina, um, you know, doing their thing, like as an actor, like how do you do you absorb any of that? Like, is it? Yeah, man. You know, I'm competitive, man. Like, you know, to be to say the least, being an Olympian, you can't not be competitive. So like. When I'm going there, if I'm whoever I'm doing a scene with, I'm I'm trying to get my best. I'm trying to come in like, oh man, I never, I never, I wasn't expecting that, you know. Like I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can, and you know the the other uh, I was gonna say athlete, the other actor gave me a great compliment. He, um, the guy playing the Fed when I when I talked to the, to the Fed the federalities, I want to say the federalities when I talked to the feds, uh, he was like, man. Um, when I'm at home saying these lines with my wife, it's totally different than coming in here saying it with you, Jamie. You're killing me. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff makes it in and some of the stuff doesn't, you know. That was the great thing about that scene with me in London is, like, I had a couple good, like, improv moments that I was just in the moment, and I was, and, and they kept them, you know. Yeah. When I told them, I was like, be the next. You know, they kept, that was just a line that just popped out of my mouth, you know what I mean? Because I was, yeah. like, ready, like, Let's go, man. You want to fight? Let's do it. You know, be the next one to get knocked out. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, like I said, it's been really fun. It's been such a blessing. I, I can't wait to, to do some more. You know. Well, look, man. After the season finale, we might have to do a we might have to do a wrap up and yeah. get you back on on, on interview number. Uh, I guess it'll be interview number three at least. Um, this is interview number two or, or three. Um, I know we got we got you up there. But we're gonna keep yeah. keep it going. We're gonna keep on on the follow-ups. And I, I know uh, 
Raising Canaan might have 10 seasons the way they, they write him, but I, I know you're going to have other stuff going on too. So we're going to just stay yeah. tuned in um, online yeah. and online, of course, and, um, you know, wish uh, uh, the, the family, um, tell, tell Siobhan and, and the, the two little, the two little, Potential Olympians that can do anything else, they might be president of the United States or whatever. Right, right. They got right. some DNA in them. That's that's <laughs> right. If they want to, can... a coach would love to see them on the track. They would love to see them come out there. Just, right, just, uh, right. You know, just, just take care of that. They come out there on the West Coast, man. I had to had to make make a pop up visit on you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, anytime my door is open to you tomorrow. All right, man. Thank you for your time, Jamie Dietto, playing yes, Demo, and yes, uh. Sir. And doing the most on and off the screen, man. Love you, brother. Thanks for the time. All right. Much love, brother. Peace. Peace.